precious greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so happy and very delighted to be a part of this uh, serialized messages about abundant giving. Glory! And at this point in time, I'd like us to be with me in this united prayer. Glory, glory, glory to God. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, receive our thanks and our praises. Thank you so much for again you are giving us this great blessed privilege that we can meditate upon your word. We pray that you will help us that we may be able to comprehend your word and that your word be in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. Make this meditation a great blessing to us all. And we believe that your Holy Spirit will truly guide us. Thus, we can comprehend the spiritual things that belong to you and you want us to know about. Thank you so much. Bless this meditation in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. Amen. Amen. I'd like us to truly uh, extend my greetings to you all. It has been a long time that we have not seen each other. But we praise God that through this online message, we can see each other heart to heart. To God be the glory. And I'd like us to have this meditation be entitled, Discovering the Blessings of Abundant Giving. Let me repeat that discovering and that's for you and for me to discover the blessings of abundant giving to God be the glory how many of you have truly experienced giving amen the next question is how many of you have experienced abundant giving praise God let me read our text today, which is found in Acts 20, verse 35. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let me repeat that line. The Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Entonces, in nuestra en lengua español, beloved, mas bien venturado es uh, dar que recibir. I must teach and dar que and receiver. Praise the Lord. Now we shall dwell on this. Remember, these were the very words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because it was the Lord Jesus Christ who stated this, then this must be true and this is something that we must believe in we must claim it and be a part of our faith. Praise God. Now, in here, we know, beloved, for a start, I'd like us to, to catch your attention about this. How many of you have seen this? Amen. I know you are very, very acquainted with this. This is $100. This is, in short, is money. Which 
I know many of you possess this. Many of you have this in your purse, in your bags, in your house, in your cabinets, and even in the banks. Now, beloved, we know that this is a piece of paper. However, it has its value. It has its power. It is a tender note, a note tender to be used, to be used in buying. So, the more you have this, the more you can truly avail yourselves of the things you would like to possess. But first, let me give you a story, a story. This is a simple story which I have read many, many years ago when I was still, you know, a Sunday school teacher in, uh, with the kids, teaching the kids. And this is a story about the journey of one dollar. This is one hundred dollars. The journey of that dollar. And you know, the story goes this way. That in a child's mind, when he had that uh, one dollar, he heard about, you know, a story of a grandma. You know that one dollar has a journey. And to make the long story short is that that dollar was used in purchasing groceries. That one dollar was used in uh, buying some candies, buying donuts, or buying bread. And we can say that the grandma said, you know that one dollar was transferred from one hand to another, from one person to another, and that one dollar was used to buy things that is desired by the possessor, the owner of the one dollar. And, you know, the dollar was uh, be, was transferred from one hand to another. And he said that, oh, I'm very used up into buying things. And then one day, the dollar became so happy. You know why? Because there was someone who put him, or who, who put it, inside the, uh, the plate, the offering plate. And you know what made the dollar happy? He said, at last, I am now given to for a holy use because it was placed on an offering plate. You know, beloved, this may be true, and this is true, I can say, that this is, is a child is, uh, story might be true in the present situation that we've got. We have money, use the money in purchasing many things, the things that we like to, to buy. And considering that money, we know its value is being used. And as I have told you, that money, that one dollar, became happy when it was used for a holy purpose. Oh, let me be, that's why I, I said this, because our topic today is about the blessing of abundant giving. And for sure, this is about, you know, our share, our giving, in the work of the Lord. Praise God. Now with this, I'd like us to see and uh, expound on these words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Why is giving more blessed than receiving? In the natural setup, we know that 
It is better to receive. We like to receive, right? We want to receive. We are happier when we receive. And everyone would like to receive something. But here are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ that says that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Therefore, in giving, there are blessings. Take note of this. Let me repeat that. In giving, based on the Lord's words, in giving, there is that category or line or truth that it is more blessed to give. And so it's now our uh, chance to meditate on this blessed, blessedness, in these blessings that is given or expressed in, by, uh, when we give. It, the blessings that we get when we give, as is stated by our Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I'd like us to see, beloved, okay, in this basic truth before I take that up. You know, this is a general truth. And take note of this. This is a general truth that one can only give when he has received something. Meaning that he cannot, he cannot give when he has not received anything. So in 1 Corinthians 4, 7, it is clearly stated that it is a question that is posed to us. What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? I'd like us to take that second line. What do you have, brothers and sisters? What do you have that you did not receive? That is a great question. And it is a question that would truly make us, okay, assess about its truth in our in ourselves. May I repeat that? What do you have which you did not receive? Meaning that we are pointed to the truth that everything that we have are all given. Timothy expresses that we are people who have come into this world. First Timothy 6, 7, let's have that. It says there we are people who have brought nothing. We possess nothing. We did not bring anything into this world. And so thus we can, we can take nothing out of it. Even uh, Job gave this uh, description that man is has nothing. He possesses nothing. In Job 121, the word used by Job here was the word naked. Naked. And said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. So you see, beloved, that is our description. We came out of this world. Not even the richest uh, families having their children. There is no such thing as you have brought a silver spoon or a bottle of milk. No one has that uh, experience. So it is a main fact. It is a general truth that everyone has nothing when he came into this world, meaning he possesses nothing. So therefore, as I told you a while ago, before you can give, you must receive something. And this is the reason, beloved, why, why we can see that in the scriptures, 
the people, the great people of the Bible have realized and acknowledged that great truth that he is, possesses nothing. He possesses nothing. And that is why, you know, that led to the right attitude in giving there will be a need to have the right attitude. And the right attitude was expressed by King David in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 14. 1 Chronicles 29, verse 14. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give us generously as this? Listen to this, my dear brothers and sisters. This was the declaration of King David. Everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are glad to see this. This kind of attitude of King David. He acknowledged that. Every time he gives something to the Lord, every time he offers something to the Lord, he acknowledges that everything, anyway, was from God. Everything that he has given comes from God. Even today, beloved, in our you know, in our act of giving, in giving, we must remember what King David said. Everything that we offer to God truly came from God. Amen. To God be the glory. So with this, beloved, let me go back now. As to what I have told you, that, you know, what Christ said, it is more blessed, meaning it has blessings, it has more blessings to give than to receive. And what are those? What are those, beloved? First, I'd like us to see that this uh, giving is an act exemplified by God. Let me repeat that. You know, giving is an act exemplified. It was modeled by God himself. Praise the Lord. If you will truly you know, see what the Bible says about giving, you know, it is indicated in the very core of the whole Bible, the very nucleus. And what is that? John 3.16 for God so loved the world. You so you see this love of God to the world was truly proven by what? By giving. And that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So you see, here is our God who loved us he says he proved, he showed this love for us by what? The act of giving. Praise the Lord. And so I'd like us to look into, as I have said, that there are blessings. Oh, truly blessings. Which truly are given to those who give. So whenever we give, first blessing that we've got to remember is that whenever we give, whenever we give, the first great blessing that we receive is what? We become, you know, the instrument we are privileged to be an instrument to display, to expose 
who God is and much more. The character of God. When we give, again, let me say that, we are expressing, showing and displaying the character of our God. And we, are, we become the instrument to show that when we give because you know that it is an index. Whenever we give, it is an index that or it is a proof that we have received something from God. And when we give abundantly, it means that God has given us abundantly as well. Praise the Lord. So, beloved, what enables someone to give abundantly means that God has showered him, has given him abundant blessing to God be the glory. And that was expressed in John 1.16 that we have received from God blessings after blessings. Yes, from the fullness of His grace, we have all received one blessing after another. And who among you can shout, Amen? Those who have received the blessings from God. Praise the Lord. I will not touch anymore about, you know, um, the grace, of course, because all of these blessings are grace, 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 given, given without pay. Amen. To God be the glory. What a great, you know, what a great privilege God has given us to be used to truly expo expose, display, and de demonstrate who God is. So, beloved, whenever we give abundantly, it is pointing to our God. Hey, God has blessed you abundantly. Praise the Lord. That is why what enables you is that you have received that blessings from the Lord. His being the Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, meaning God is the one who provides. Look at yourself today. Look at your status today. Brothers and sisters, many of us or some of us, Maybe come from, mm -hmm, from a lowly status. We come from scratch, they say. Nothing. But now, we can say, oh, so many of you can boast, you know, that you can boast that you have received abundant blessings from God. In fact, in the Filipino language, that is what we always say. Whenever we have something, what do we say? Biaya. In Filipino, that's called biaya. In English, it's called grace. That we have received grace, that unmerited favor from God. To God be the glory. So, beloved, what a great blessing. Whenever we give abundantly, it points to our God, who is the source of all these things to God be the glory now. So with this, beloved, blessing number two, blessing number two, you know, the word or the way a giver is addressed by the Lord Jesus Christ. More what? Blessed, blessed. How many of you would like to be called blessed? Amen. We want to be called blessed. Nosotros somos bienventurados. Praise God. That we have received that address, the title. Oh, it was the Lord who called these people who give us blessed. To God be the glory. And to be blessed, beloved, has a great meaning. 
it entails so much great meaning. And what is that? Once you are called blessed, it means you have found favor in the sight of God. It means that God is pleased with you. Oh, praise God. To be blessed is to be finding pleasure in the eyes of God. You're pleasing in the sight of God. And the Bible is so pregnant with so many people called blessed. And one of them is the giver. Praise God. Would you like to be called blessed? Amen. We all want to be called blessed because God has truly looked at us. Oh, with great favor, glory. That is why in the secular world, in the world, you know, in the world, in the secular world, when someone gives, he feels, he loses. When someone gives, he feels, he loses. But the scriptural, scriptural meaning, beloved, and implication is that when we give, we do not lose, but we gain. Amen. Amen. We gain. Do you know why? This is the blessing which God gives. Once we give, that act of giving will be what? Rewarded. God will surely reward whatever we give. You know, in the basic, in the in the giving of even of tithes, that has been expressed already. Everyone knows about that text in Malachi three ten. You know that, beloved. That is a foundational. That is basic. Let's have that. See, once, see, when we bring our whole tithe into the storehouse, see, he said, test me, prove me, says the Lord Almighty, and see it. I will not throw open the flood gates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. To God be the glory. Take note of this, beloved. This is foundational, as I said, because we know that the basic giving is starts from the tithes. But look at this. What is the reward? Oh, beloved, this is beyond description because our Lord Almighty promised that His reward will be what? He will throw open the floodgates of heaven. In other translation of the Bible, it's called, try me if I will not open the windows of heaven. Yes, the windows of heaven. Now, let's come down to earth, beloved. How many of us has, you know, uh, an idea? How big is the window of heavens or the windows of heaven how big how wide and how deep and how you know how high see it was illustrated by the word flood gates in short in short in one word dam you know what a dam is where the water is stored. It's a reservoir where much water is contained there. A dam. So once the gates of the dam are open, you know, water will be unstoppable. It what it will be very, very great. Oh, praise the Lord! I know. Beloved, these are truly superlatives. Floodgates, windows of heaven. See, these are the promises of God. For those who what? 
who give praise the Lord. And that was the, you know, the basic, the basic, because that was about the tithes. But however, you know, beloved, whenever we give, there is that uh, lingering promise of God that He will not forget. Oh, praise the Lord. He will not forget. 610 of Hebrews clearly states that our God is not unjust. He will not forget your work. He will not forget your giving and the love you have shown Him as you have helped His people and continue to help them. Here is what? A verse that points to God that He is not forgetful, meaning He will remember our work and that includes our work of giving, our act of giving. To God be the glory. And that is blessing number two. Now let me take you, beloved, to blessings number three. See, that was, you know, given at the very outset, at the very beginning, that we have to discover the blessings of abundant giving. And this time, I'd like us to to mention the blessing number three. You know, beloved, when we give, we are doing what that great imitation or that great, uh, or following the great example of our God. When we give, we are showing, demonstrating the great example set by God. Meaning we are obedient, doing the example, doing the great example of our God. Now, we can see, beloved, the kind of giving exemplified by God. We know for a fact, I have mentioned to you that 316 of John truly exposes, you know, expresses that that love of God led him to give. And his giving was truly expressive also of the quality of his giving. He gave his only begotten son. Dios ha dado su unigénito hijo para a todos. Praise God. And that is true. So you see, God's giving was what the best that he can ever give. Oh, praise the Lord. And for that, this, beloved, gives us an idea. Why was he why did God able to give the best? Okay, let us see in 1 John 4, 9. This is how God showed His love among us. Praise the Lord. So you see that giving was truly driven and led. It's the upshoot of God's love for us. Oh, God loves you. Praise God. And tell this to your uh, brother or sister, to your right, to your left, at your back, at, and in front of you. God loves you. Praise God. And that he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is what the example set by our God that we may follow the love, the gift God has exemplified. And in 4.10, let us continue this. And this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us, amen, and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. These two verses are displayed 
they have displayed, you know, the kind of love of the Lord which was expressed in giving or His giving was quali qualitatively and quantified by the giving of His gift, the kind of gift that His He has given. Oh, praise God. God has given us the best. God has given us, take note of this, His giving was moved by love. May I repeat that? See, somebody said that and we have heard that many, many times. You can love, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. May I repeat that? You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. And here is beloved teaching us what God has truly that what God has exemplified in us. It was the giving with love. Praise the Lord. May I repeat that? It is the giving with love. And that, beloved, was also demonstrated by King David. His love for God, which was in term of the word devotion, 1 Chronicles 29, verse 4. Let us see, beloved, this love demonstrated through giving. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, so you see, in my devotion, meaning his commitment, and of course, that is driven by his love, for the Lord, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple. This is the kind of giving which is the option or moved by love. Verse 4, 3,000 talents of gold, gold of fear, and 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls of buildings. Look at this, beloved. As I have told you, giving with love is demonstrated by our God. And he is a man of God, King David. And we have read, you know, how much he has given. Take note of this. It's, it was personal. So he did not bank on what others have given. Maybe some of us may, may uh, say the, that, you know, anyway, my mom... My dad, they give to the church. I will not give anymore. And uh, maybe at, in some instances, when we see that our uh, the husband or the wife has given already big, okay, we can say, uh, can you just uh, add me to the to the list of names and uh, make me just a partner, share. In what you have given. Beloved, here is the presentation of King David's devotion. He personal, uh, he gave personal treasures. And I'm talking about this time about the quality of gift. I told you that our God has given his best for us. This time King David gave what? That 3,000 talents. Let me have that verse. 3,000 talents of gold. Now, take note of this for your information. My dear brothers and sisters, the kind of gold mentioned here was the gold of Ophir. Ophir is known and famous for having the best 
quality of gold. It's not. If you are from Bicol Peninsula, they have their, uh, you know, the excavation of gold over there, but it is called parakale. Ginto sa parakale, mawalan may dibale. Gold that is excavated from parakale, even though it gets lost, mm, it's never mind. It has no value. But here, beloved, definitely the kind of gold given by King David was that the best gold ever of fear. So you know what a talent is? How much? How big? How heavy is one talent? It is 78 pounds. And so those who are good in mathematics, you can just multiply. 3,000. Okay? Times 78. Because 78 pounds is equivalent to one talent. So you can just imagine the vastness, the abundant giving of King David. But, you know, the blessing of that is what? The blessing is that he was able to exemplify the example of God. You know, beloved, when we have the desire, let me tell you, the Lord will surely answer, respond to what you like. If you want, beloved, to give, a lot, you know, ask God and He will give you. For sure, He will answer because our God is the source of everything. To God be the glory. And at this point in time, my dear brothers and sisters, the greatest blessing that God gives us is what? That great privilege that great chance, that great opportunity that He gives us, that He allows us to express our love for Him through giving. He gives us this privilege to give. Praise the Lord. And that one thing that we must remember, God can see can see our gifts. He can see our giving. He can see what is in our heart. He can see our desire. For sure, abundant giving is in line with the will of God. And if it is the will of God to give abundant giving, let me tell you, 100% the Lord will be the one to provide. Do you have this desire to give abundantly? Is it in your heart to give abundantly? Beloved, our God is our great providence and He will truly answer what is in our hearts. What a great blessing. We are given this great privilege to share to share in His work. So at this point in time, beloved, always remember that blessing, the blessing God has given to us is that we become the instrument to show and display the character of our God that is our ever generous God our great provider. Now, at this point in time, if you have this desire, Pastor Let, I want to give, I want to give. God can see that and you will see that He will answer. He will respond to what you desire. Delight yourself the Lord said, and He will 
truly give his response to you. Let us pray. And if you have this desire, take note of the promise of God. Ask and you shall receive. Praise the Lord. So what we shall do is what? What our hearts desire, what our hearts ask for, beloved, our God will surely answer. And take note of this before we pray. How does God answer? How does God answer? Or how does God give? Ephesians 3.20 Praise the Lord. Ephesians 3.20 Now, to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. So if you are asking the Lord to give you thousand, He will give you ten thousand. If you ask Him for small things, God will give you great things. Because that's the promise, immeasurably more. That is our God. Remember, our God is a generous God who gives abundantly. Praise the Lord that truly must shout out. We must shout out this great uh, character of God. God is a generous giving. Amen. God is is truly giving abundantly. Amen. This can be yours. Let us pray. Glory, glory, glory to your name. Father, thank you so much for giving us this great opportunity to share, to give, to be partner with the work of God through giving. Thank you for teaching us to give and how to give. Thank you for making yourself an example for us when you gave your son Jesus. Thank you, Father, and help us, help us to be truly, be like you. Generous giving because you, our God, recompenses any act of giving, any act of love you will surely reward so we pray make your blessings be poured out to your people who desire to give abundantly and your promise is what we claim and we ask this in the wonderful name of jesus amen amen to god be the glory let's wait and see and taste the promise of God. God bless.